them. Okay, let's pray one more time. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for this opportunity to learn and grow together. Please send your Holy Spirit of truth to guide us and to teach us. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right. All right. This is my favorite part because, you know, I'm always learning and I want you guys to help me too. So I'm going to ask questions and you can look up Bible verses and I'll be teaching you some songs and some of them you probably already know, but some of them I made. So, well, God gave me. So, okay, this is my first question. What do you do when you get all excited about something? Super, super excited. What do you do? Anybody want to share? Yeah. Yeah? What do you do? Then I, if it is something that will happen, somewhere else then I uh, quickly ask my mom or dad to drive me there or to just run there if it is so close mm, and I know the way then I run there mm. oh that's a good thing to do yeah. isn't it I'm glad you asked your parents first and do you just keep it to yourself or do you share it with anybody else share it you share it would it be fun to do to get all excited about something and not be able to tell anyone if you were all excited about something and you weren't allowed to tell anyone at all would that be fun no no it wouldn't that's right it's really hard not to tell anyone right when we have some good news this lady she did my Bible study, my Bible class for my kids. Um, and so she's now doing one for. Um, can you mute yourself, Camelin? Sorry. No problem. <laughs> Thank you. So um, it's really, really hard not to tell someone about something good, isn't it? So hard. I think that's for a good reason, because God wants us to share anything good we have to share it with others and he made it really fun to do so i have another question what do married couples do when they have so much love to share they have more than just for themselves can you think of what happens when when mommy and daddy get married and they're they're so happy and they're so in love and they have more love to share who did they share that with friends and everyone with everyone. Mm. Does this picture give you a clue what they might have if they have more love to share? What does this look like? Whose room is this? That be a room for an adult or for somebody little? I don't think we can see what you're referring to. Oh, did I not put the share screen? No. We can see it. You can oh. see it? Can everyone see it? I can see it. Oh, where do we go to see it? <laughs> go. Okay. okay. Um, go up to the um. You will have a little thing where you can see the options. The options of whether you see everybody yeah. or just the main screen. Oh, okay. Let's see. So let me know once you can see it, because that's oh. okay. Go ahead and keep going. We'll see if we can figure it out here. Okay, dear Jesus, help them so they can see it. Okay, so it's a picture of a room with a crib. <clears throat> so it's for kids. It is for baby. It's for babies, that's right. So when mommy and daddy have so much extra love to give, they have kids, right? To share it with. Because it's so much fun to share. It's not very fun to keep everything to ourselves. It's much better when we can share it, right? And God is a family of love, remember? God is a family of love and their love is as wide and as deep and as high as, it's as wide as the sky and as deep as the ocean and as high as, as we can go way, way high. And it's just so big, it never runs out. So can you imagine God has so much love 
And so they had lots and lots of love to share. And so they wanted to share it, right? If you had that much love, wouldn't you want to share it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I would. So God love is an endless circle of giving. Oh, I think I missed a verse, didn't I? Do you guys want to help me with that verse? Ephesians 3. <clears throat> Maybe I just put that up for a reference. I can't remember. <laughs> you know, it might be in there later on. But Ephesians 3 talks about God's love. I can't see anybody else. Do you guys know where Ephesians is? It's in the New Testament. Let's see. I have a new Bible. I'm not used to it. Ephesians 3, 17 through 19. Um, oh, it talks about Christ dwelling in our hearts. Hmm? So, because he wants us to comprehend the height and the depth and the length of his love. So God's love is so big. And God's love is an endless circle of giving. Next week, we're going to have a really exciting activity. I can't wait to do it with you guys. Hopefully, you'll have enough in your group to try it. Um, but God always lived to love and bless others. You know, they have so much love. They never run out. Everything they have, they have so much. They never run out. And they love to give it to others. So they're a circle of giving. So what do you think God did with all that love? Did they keep it to themselves? He gave it away. He gave it away. Very good. Let's look it up. Can somebody look up Revelation? That's the last book in the Bible. Revelation 4, verse 11. Do I have a volunteer that would like to read that? Revelation 4, 11. just the one verse you are worthy our lord and god to receive glory and honor and power you created all things and by your will they were created and have and have their being so what did god create okay Everything. That's right. Is there anything we made? No. No, that's right. We're Very good. <laughs> yeah, we didn't make anything, right? God made everything. God made the universe. You know, in Amos 5 8, it talks about God making everything, even the stars, everything. So God made the universe, He made the stars, He made the planets. And then he made our world. Are you glad God made our world? Full of animals and plants and fun things to discover and, and do. He made our world. Just a beautiful, beautiful place. Why did he do that? Can somebody tell me why? Why? Any ideas why God did that? To show his angels. To mm -hmm. share. That's right. To share with his angels and to share with us. Let's read it. Can someone help me read? I'm going to let, um, I'll just have it up on the screen and someone can read each page. That way you can all take turns. Someone like to read that? I'm read it, Ava. How precious, how precious is you, your steadfast love, oh God. Wow, he has steadfast love. That means it never changes. <laughs> Who wants to read the next one? The children of man mankind. Mankind. Feast. Feast on the abund abundance. abundance of you, your, your house. house. 
Very good. You read some very big words. So the children of mankind feast. That means to eat a lot, you know, like they like have a party on the abundance of your house. That means he has lots and lots. Hmm? And can someone read me that one? You give them drink for from your from the river of your delight. So he has a river of delight. Does that sound fun? It, that means fun, right? That's another word for delight. I mean, for fun. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Who wants to read this one? Let me move me out of the way. Okay. I'm reading it. I should go read. For with you is the foundation of the fountain of life in your light we do do we see light very good so god's the found fountain of life right and he gives us light he gives us love he gives us joy he gives us fun things to do right that's in psalms 36 7 through 9 i really like that psalm i think it's really cool so God created everything to share their beautiful love with you and me and everyone else. Isn't that really cool? Yeah. I'm glad God loves us that much. It's awesome. So I started teaching you guys this little song. So I'll sing it again so you can learn. God's love is patient, kind and true. God's love is gentle and never rude. God is not arrogant, forceful or proud. God is love and I'll shout it out loud. So God created the angels and God created Adam and Eve. And they made all the creatures, everything they made was to share their love. I like that. And Adam and Eve and all the creatures God made were completely happy because God is love. And they were God's children. And they had a good daddy because God took care of them completely, right? He gave them everything good. They didn't have anything to be scared of. There wasn't anything bad. Nobody died. Nobody got sick. No, there was nothing bad, sad, or scary. And they trusted God completely. They trusted him to take care of all their needs. They didn't have any worries. They got to share everything. They had so much fun. So everyone is happy taking everything they needed from God and sharing the blessings with others because nobody thought they were in charge. Everybody knew God was the one who made everything. God was the one who took care of them. Nobody thought they were better than anybody else. So they took from God every day because he had it to give. He was so excited to give it to him. And then they shared that with everyone else. So that's extra fun, right? Because when you have something really special and then you get to share it with someone else, that's fun. Do you guys ever have birthday parties? Or is something else like that? where you get to yes. somebody over and share? Do you get to share something with them? Maybe maybe, um, maybe something to eat, maybe some cookies or cake or some fruit. I don't like sweets, I'm weird, but <laughs> so I would share fruit or something like that, right? So it's really fun to share with others. So, I like fruit too. You like fruit too? Oh, yes. I love fruit. I think I could live on fruit. <laughs> okay. I'm going to sing you the song that I sang you last week so you can learn it. And I'm going to add a little bit more. God is a family of everlasting love. So perfectly united, they are one. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, three in one. God made us families to reflect their love, blessing one another selflessly. Father, mother, children too, caring for each other faithfully. So who is God? Do you remember? Love. 
Love, that's right. God is love. Very good. And what is God? It's right on the screen. Can someone tell me what God is? A family of love. A family of love. Very good. Yes, God is a family of love. So I have a question for you. Who are you? And let's look it up in 1 John 3, verse 1. Find out who you are. 1 John 3, verse 1. And there's four Johns, so it can be a little confusing. But if you go to Revelation, which is the last book in the Bible, and then you go backwards a little bit, you'll find 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John. And so we're going to go to that tiny little bitty book. First John and chapter three, verse one. So can someone read that for me? How great is the love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called the children of God. And so that is what we we are. The reason very good. Very good. So who are you? Who are you? The children of God. The children of God. And if you're God's child and God owns everything and he made everything and he can fix everything, will he take good care of you? Yeah. Yes, he will. We can trust God even when things don't go very good. We can trust him that he's going to take care of us and he'll work it all out. Mm. So, you are God's child. That makes you very, 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 very special. Because you're very loved by God. Even if no one else in the whole universe loved you, if no one else loved you, God loves you so much all the time, 100%. So, no matter what, you're very, very loved. I like that. So what kind of special group did God put us in when he made us in our world? Can anybody figure that out? What are you, what do you live in? Family. A family. Are you glad God made families? Okay. I'm so glad God made families. So God put us in families. Can you figure out why on earth God would put us in families? Why would he do that? Any idea? What? What's because there? he loves us. Because he loves us. Would you like to live all by yourself or would you rather live in a family? A family. A family, that's right. So God put us in family so we can learn to love one another and take care of each other and bless each other. And as that grows... Of course, that doesn't always happen in our sad world. But then we can become a family of God in, in his church if we don't have our own personal family. God has many ways to put us in families because he wants us to know that we're special and that we can help others know that they're special and help each other. And as our families grow, then we can help other families and other people. So that's why God put us in family so we can learn to take care of each other and love each other and share. Isn't that good? So God wants us to share all the love and blessings we get from who? Where do we get all our love and blessings from? God. That's right, from God. So as we get all that from God and we share it, then we can share it and give it to each other. Because if I don't have anything to give, I can't give you anything. But if we go to God, then we have plenty to share. So are you glad we are God's children? And you know what? That makes us part of God's great big family. But that never makes us God. Can you make something on your own and make it live? 
No. No, me neither. None of us ever can. So we're God's children. We're part of his family, but we'll never, ever, ever, ever be God. I'm so glad because I'd make a really bad God. <laughs> so, I, oops, what did I do? <laughs> All right. Um, sorry. Um, <laughs> I don't know what it did. Hmm. Well, let's pray. I'll stop the share and then we'll pray. <laughs> Does somebody want to pray or do you want me to pray? Dear God, please thank you for that we are a family of you and that we can be in the celestial city forever, the family of life. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. I'm so glad God loves us and he made us all in families and God's a family of love and he loves to share with us. And I'm yeah. so glad he loves you and your family and everyone around you. So mm -hmm. thanks for joining me. I'm going to um, stop the recording and then you can tell me your names or whatever you want. We can learn a, a little bit more about each other. We'll see if I can figure out how to do this. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. <laughs>